the channel. Um, what we got going on today is uh, we are going to do an oil change on my Grand Sport Corvette. This car is a 2012, probably already know that by now, um, and it does have a, uh, a dry sump engine which means it has an external oil tank. Um, a little bit further into the video I'll explain the difference between a dry sump and a wet sump. I'm going to show you the two drain plugs on a dry sump engine so you know that if you have a dry sump car and you're doing your own oil change, make sure that you're draining both of the plugs, both of the sumps out to get the oil out of it. Um, a real quick going over what a dry sump is, is it's an external oil tank. They do that on the cars that they think may see some track use and the reason they do that is because they increase the oil capacity. More oil, oil capacity means more cooling, means more lubrication, means better longevity and so that's why they do that. My car holds ten and a half quarts. Um, it's a lot of oil and uh, they're not sponsoring, they're not involved in it, but this time I'm trying the AMS oil and I'm using the 100% synthetic XL motor oil. It's a 10W40. It says 12 mile, 12,000 miles or a year. Um, I don't run my oil 12,000 miles. I, this one, this changes at about 4,000 miles, maybe a little bit less. And uh, that's, that's about it. That's about the max for me for an oil change. So um, I've kind of switched over to AMS oil for stuff. And, uh, Price-wise, I've been a, uh, a Mobile One user for my whole life, but I did some reading on an independent uh, testing guy who, you know, AMS oil consistently performs at the top levels of the oil, so I'm going to try it out for my personal opinion. We'll see what it does. Uh, got no problems with Mobile One, which I had been using, and so we'll go to AMS oil. Um, AMS oil is a little bit cheaper, and it rates higher than Mobile One, so... The reason that I'm doing that is because it's saving me a little bit of money. It's a performance oil. It's a full synthetic. So there you go. And uh, I did their is it preferred customer program. I think it's 20 or 25 bucks for a year. And uh, shipping is free and the cost is reduced. And so if you're thinking about going AMS oil, look into that program. In the long run, I think it'll save me money. Well, I, I know it saved me money already because... Um, I think it was, uh, the original bill was going to be around $140 and I think it just wound up being $108. I got a case of oil and so I think it's a good deal. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with it. So again, AMS Oil doesn't sponsor me. I'm not, but I'm giving them a plug because I'm using their oil. Now, if it blows this thing up, then uh, you'll hear back from me about it. So, But I doubt it. I, I, I don't see a, a problem with that. Great oil, great product, and I've never heard anything bad about them. So anyway, I think I covered everything. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are. Anyway, um, top side of the engine, and uh, the first, uh, the most important thing to notice about a dry sump system is this is where you check your oil, and this is the passenger side of the car over here that we're standing at. Uh, again, this is your dipstick for checking your oil, and this is your oil fill on this side of the tank. Um, and you can see kind of how the tank is down here below and it drops down further behind the uh, behind the front wheel and so let me back off and give you a little bit of a kind of without hopefully making anybody dizzy and you can kind of see my phone because I control my GoPro with my phone anyway this is the oil fill right here and dipstick over here and uh, we're over here on the passenger side of the car yeah we already got it up on the quick jack so let's make it easier for the oil change and so now the other thing is in a non-dry sump car move my phone out of the way a little bit um, right in here you're going to have the oil fill cap and so that's where you would put the oil and your battery would be over in this section uh, your battery would be over here where your uh, dry sump tank is so basically what they did with this car took the battery they put it in the uh, back in the in the trunk area on the passenger side and then they put the oil tank in here and again you don't have a uh, an oil fill cap on the valve cover so that's basically the big difference between a dry sump and a wet sump car on the wet sump you would have it and you wouldn't have this tank over here on the dry sump you'd have you have it the tank over here no oil fill over here probably just made everybody dizzy with that moving the camera that fast and uh, your battery would be back over here on a uh, wet sump car. So, 
All right, here we are underneath the car. These are two lines that, that uh, go to and from the, uh, the oil tank that we talked about up top. This is one of the drain plugs that you have to drain. This is the other drain plug that you have to drain. This is for a uh, dry sump car. And so if you don't have this hose, if you crawl underneath your Corvette and you don't have these hoses running up and there's only a single drain plug, then you've got a wet sump car. That's another way of checking. And so anyway, that's basically what you got. Um, again, you'll have to pull that one and that one and make sure that they both drain and then uh, drop your filter, put your new filter on and then uh, add your oil. Now, when I do my filters, I always pre-fill my oil filters uh, as much as I can get them full, just because that way there's oil in the filter to get started. And uh, that's just how I do it. So anyway, uh, let me get this stuff knocked apart and we'll go ahead and do the oil change on this thing and uh, get it buttoned up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I don't want to run over my cord for my microphone. I'm going to go ahead and take this drain plug out. We'll see how much oil drains out of it. I've got the oil plant pan set up kind of away from, but right underneath the edge of the hole. So hopefully we don't spread oil all over the floor. Don't reef it on there. I know there's a torque spec for it, but I just do snug in a little bit. Just make sure it's not going to come off of there. All right, so now is the fun one. Because this drain plug is going to drain the most oil. Okay, and let me see, make sure you can see this. When you're changing oil, there's a gasket on the bottom of the oil filter. Make sure that that comes off. Um, if it's not, it'll be stuck to the bottom of the block up here. I think you can see that. Um, and then if you don't notice it, and you don't notice that it's there, and you go to put your new oil filter on, it won't seal. As soon as you start the car up, it'll uh, allow that other gasket to spit out of there, and it'll dump all your oil all over the ground. So. That's one of the things to look out for. Make sure you're doing that if you've never changed your own oil before. Little things like that. That's like when you go to put the, the new oil filter on, always take a little bit of that, just, a, just a, a little bit of oil and lubricate that seal. Just run your finger around that seal. And uh, that way the contact point up there when you go to spin the filter back on, 
it'll have a little bit of lubrication so it'll, it'll let it seal up a, a lot better and uh, you won't have any leaks or shouldn't have any leaks so right now I overfilled the filter just a smidge so it's probably gonna leak down the side while I'm doing this but that's okay it's just kind of the way stuff happens sometimes Just make sure you don't drop it. Okay. Contact at the bottom. So now it shouldn't drip anymore. I think I just ran over my... That was probably loud on the mic. Sorry about that. All right, because I dripped the uh, oil down the side of the canister, I'm going to wipe it down while I'm putting it in. Make sure I get it tight enough. Should only put it on hand tight, but make sure that it is not going to spin itself back off. There we go. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. So, basically that is that. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and double check the, the drain plugs. Make sure I did. Yep, both of them are tight. Good to go. And so, that's it underneath here. Um, new filter, plugs tight, oil drained. Now we're going to go up top side and put oil back in it. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, got a little bit of a uh, extra shop towel up here kind of to help out in case there's a drip or anything. Pop out the uh, fill cap, sit it up there, and then I've got a funnel. Drop the funnel in there, and uh, we'll go ahead and start pouring the oil in there. All right. Go ahead and start pouring this oil in here. This is the uh, quart that I used to pre-fill the, uh, the filter. We know our capacity is 10 quarts, or excuse me, 10 and a half quarts. And so, one down, a few more to go. This is our last quart so now we know we only need a half of a quart to go in there so we'll go easy with it so. that's that ten and a half quarts down And the oil change is actually a pretty easy process. I know most of you, or a lot of you, have probably done 
your own or have been doing your own oil changes for a long time. But some of you may not have. Um, don't be afraid to give it a try. I mean, there's plenty of resources out there. It doesn't seem like it wants to be right. But uh, plenty of resources, like I said, to figure out how to do it yourself if you want to give it a shot. Oil changes are pretty basic and uh, one of the easiest ways for people to get into doing their own minor maintenance. And it'll save you a buck or two sometimes. Hey, that's a wrap for today's video. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this will help you understand the difference between a dry sump and a wet sump, or at least give you an idea of what to look for if you have a dry sump car. Uh, and know that if you're going to tackle the oil change yourself, make sure you have uh, a case of oil and a good filter. If you have a wet sump car, uh, half a case of oil and, again, a good filter. Don't be afraid to tackle it yourself. Just be safe with it. Put it on a proper supporting mechanism if you're going to put it up in the air. Um, I use my quick jacks. They're a great thing to have, but uh, anyway. so uh, Hey, shout out. Thanks to Kyle Davis, my independent hands oil dealer. I appreciate uh, him taking care of an issue for me recently, and uh, I'm using AMS oil, so... Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like the video, hit that like button and give me that thumbs up. And uh, as always, I appreciate any comments that you want to put down below. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch my channel. Have a great day. We'll see you all on down the road.